Women's Open semifinals. Receiving first, Ashling Riley. You hear the announcement right there from the 62nd USHA Four Wall National Handball Championships. Serving first, Samantha England. Good luck, ladies. This is one of those days, Dave, where I actually jumped out of bed. I hit my head on the ceiling. So excited about the lineup that we have today for the greatest women handball players in the world to kick off the day. The men's final, the greatest player in the game today, Paul Brady, taking on the rising superstar, Charlie Shanks. And then we've got a few men's doubles matches, Dave, to determine who's going to play off the national championship tomorrow. Unbelievable day here at Los Caballeros. Kicked off with Ashling Riley right. taking on the Canadian national champion, Samantha England. I believe that is the number four seed playing the number one seed here in this event. You see Good Samantha luck. wearing that green shirt. She's zero in the server's serve, box, zero. and this is the very first serve. This is the WPH's continued coverage of the 62nd United States Handball Association's Four Wall National Handball Championships. And the first serve is in. This is a matchup day that I've been looking forward to for Side two or out. three years from the first time that I watched Ashling play. We've watched Samantha play zero since serve, about 2007. She's always had the great physical tools, but she's starting to put it together mentally now, Dave. And her mental abilities are catching up to that amazing athleticism that she has. And Ashling, of course, has it all. She's one of the most impressive athletes I've ever seen. At times, it seems like Ashley doesn't even realize how good she is. She's so nonchalant. Her fist shots to the ceiling when she goes to the roof are just so lackadaisical, but yet the final result Two is so zero. impressive. Oh, so much Short. ease to her effort. I think she's got one of the great yeah, right corner kills in the sport. Second serve. Absolutely incredible. We've already seen her hit one. Also looks like she's putting some wrinkle on that power serve, Dave. And there's another mouse in the right corner from Ashlyn. Beautiful shot. Closes that front Three shoulder so zero. well. Gets herself square to the side wall and just rolls it into the right corner. And this is a terrible start here, Dave, for Samantha England. Four, sir, zero. Well, most of the players that play Ashlyn Riley Three realize turn. that it they will be involved in a slow start. That was a strange Four, serve zero. right there. Samantha could have hit Ashlyn. Well, that was one of those serves, Dave, that came way off the back wall. You'd think that Samantha would want that shot, but Nelson didn't give it to her. And now this is not what you want playing against the freight train. Five serve zero. Ashling Riley, she will run you over. Samantha England, Dave, has really prepared herself for this event. She traveled to virtually every okay. tournament in the spring, starting with the Women's Classic, where she really had a disappointing result. Then Five went to the zero. NYAC Invitational, the Canadian Nationals, and then the RFC a couple weeks ago just said, I'm looking to get as many tournament matches in as I can, get myself prepared. Last year, she was on this very stage in the Six National zero. Semifinals, lost to Maria Daly, another one of the great Irish women players, and that was an 11-7 tiebreaker. That was one of the best matches I ever saw her play last year, Dave. And she was just a couple of points from making the final here. So she's looking to take it a step farther. This time, though, taking on the number one seed, Ashlyn Riley. I was surprised to see that Samantha was in the upper bracket to face Ashlyn and not in the lower bracket. Obviously, after winning the Canadian National Handball Championships, it would have been neat Zero to see that matchup in the, in the lower half if it were to come to fruition. Well, also considering that she was a semi-finalist here last year, I think maybe she'd be in that Zero, two or seven, three six. spot, but let's not forget Samantha lost to Biddy Bidigan at the Women's Classic this year, Dave. That's a, a big ranking event, and perhaps that was taken into consideration with her seed. Very difficult, though, Dave. The USHA has a a difficult task trying to seed the women's draw because there aren't really official rankings. They only play... I believe two ranking events a year and then you throw in the Irish women and you don't really know where to place them. They could easily be the top four seeds. Well, One that's six. where I would place them. <laughs> I always like to see the, the Irish spread out evenly throughout the draw. So if you have four of them, you put two on the top and two on the bottom. I believe here we six had six. 
Just one on the bottom. Samantha England really playing a great match yesterday, Dave, defeating Ashley Prendeville 21-16, 21-18. And that's a great feeling, Dave, to take out a great player in two really close games, particularly for a player like Samantha. Really can build on her confidence with close wins Three, like that. Seven, six. And now Samantha, Dave's starting to impose herself here. Trailed 6-0. You can say this about most players, but Samantha is very dangerous when she's in the server's right box because she does like to serve and shoot, and she knows how to set up the game. She's not very good Six serves three. as a return of serve artist. But if she can get you out, she's going to score points. Ash Ashley Dave, somewhat of an en enigma. She looks so dominant. She looked dominant throughout the entire U.S. Open from eight six. months ago and then just completely fell apart in that second game against Megan Mahilos. And then in the tiebreaker, she was winning that match comfortably, Dave. 21-10, about 12-4 in the second game and then just completely unraveled. Megan dominating the second half of that match and handing Ashling her first ever U.S. Open loss. And yesterday, Dave, it was Bailey Chandler who had a lead late in game number one against Ashling Riley. I know you said that maybe Ashling a little bit rusty, but remember she got here on Saturday, Dave, just a week ago, and she's been on these courts every day, training and preparing and getting herself accustomed. Now, not necessarily the same as tournament conditions, but surprised that she did get off to a slow start, and I think we'll attribute a lot of that to Bailey Chandler. Score here is seven to six. Ashling Riley in the server's box. Big setup here for Samantha England, and she just paddles it into the floor. She could have drove that ball left to right, right to left, I should say, or just popped it down that wall and could have got a free point, but she tried to paddle it instead. Eight serves three. See, a lot of players trying to paddle up front. When you watch a Paul Brady just hit the ball 90 miles an hour up front. Well, what makes Paul Brady great, Dave, amongst other things, is that he's so decisive. You'll never see him take a tentative swing. He makes up his mind and just hits the shot. A lot of Samantha's airs, Dave, come from a little bit of indecision. It looks like she changes her mind just as she's about to make contact with the ball. Please Doesn't please. really truly believe in the shot that she's about to hit. And she'll have to limit those strange hand airs that, she's, that she makes. She's already made three of them here in this, early in this first game. You know, we were talking in previous broadcasts about creating some stats. And one of those stats is an unforced error. Do you believe if a player is going for a ceiling shot and they miss the ceiling and it Eight goes right three. down the middle for a setup, it should be considered an unforced error? Well, that would be sort of a separate category. Not necessarily an unforced error because an unforced error just hands your opponent the point or the side out. You have to create a name for that. We've seen it a lot in this tournament Three where some of the players would go for a ceiling, they miss the roof, and the pro players are so accurate that it's almost as if you're just handing them a free point. Might as well just grab the ball and hand it to them and say, here, here you go. I actually do that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. Four serves eight. That's a friendly unforced error. Or an unforced error with an assist. And now Samantha really hitting the ball well in this rally. Not a bad shot right there from Samantha. A lot of people, Dave, don't know this, but that ball just wrinkles away from Ashling. She's looking for the screen call. Generally, Nelson will give that to you if you lobby, but he won't, Dave. He goes five, right seven, to the scorecard and marks the back wall. five you points for that ball came off the back wall. Samantha, but Dave, Ashling Riley trains at the Sport Institute in Ireland. The only athletes that train there are Olympians. And they've allowed Ashling and Charlie Shanks to come there and train. They have access to all the best physical trainers, the physios, the masseuse, the sports psychologist, every Six other element that you could possibly imagine to get yourself into the best physical and mental condition in the world. Charlie, of course, they've living in New York this year, so he hasn't been training there, but he and Ashling started there two years ago. Every morning, Dave, at 6 a.m., telling me that 
They're worked out so hard that they almost black out. Charlie told me that seven, at seven, one eight. point he was seeing stars and completely black. The trainer told him that you're just not getting enough oxygen from your muscles to your brain. There's nothing wrong with that. And now, Samantha England. I saw you giving me that look. That was actually a true story, believe it or not. Eight I'm not eight. believing it, but eight, mm. eight serves eight. I'm glad to hear you do that. I was able to paint my nails while you were giving that speech. Dave, Samantha looks really good right now. I still don't think she's playing at her full potential, and yet she's got the lead here. Nine serves eight. Scores nine to eight. Dave. Samantha Dave was at the pro player party last night, stayed pretty late. She seems very relaxed coming into this match this morning. Ten serves eight. A lot of the pro players, Dave, getting together last night. I know you were invited, confirmed, and didn't show. You got a DNS that did not start. Eight serves ten. Ruffled some feathers along the way. Good. Short ball. I was your ride. Mm. And you Second decided serve. to ride with somebody else. I took that as a... That's kind of a slam. Mm. But there's a lot about this operation, this live broadcast. We had to go buy a gas can and <laughs> put some gas in it so that the... I'd never heard of that before, but the, yes. The satellite fans... Generator would work, and that's how we're getting the power this morning. Mm. So I just thought you just see. showed up five minutes before the match and talked a little well, bit and then went home. It's not like that for everybody. Samantha oh. England here now wiping up her wet spot then then she gets back to the ten serve, returner ten. serve area short. all together at 10 with Ashley and Riley I called it short going up against a buzzsaw here Dr. England serve. Dave now on a 10 to 4 run trailed 6 nothing to start this match and has really dictated play and there's just one of those terrible hand airs from Samantha that's her fourth complete miss hit on a very easy ball. And Dave, I know that you thought it wasn't hot enough yesterday, so they've actually moved the grills right next to our webcast booth. They'll be grilling all day. That's an added 20 to 25 degrees on top of the 94 that it is inside this booth. It'll now be closer to 115 or 120, so that'll be comfortable for us in our blazers. Do as John Bike did at his Hall of Fame ceremony as we see Ashley coming in and pushing that ball. John Bike took off his shirt and just wore his Hall of Fame jacket. I mean, I guess when the when they honor you, you can do things like that. Well, it was, it was nice this morning when I got the text that we didn't have to wear ties today. Ten serves, 13. So, a little casual Saturday here. Samantha back in the box at 10 to 13, wearing the green shirt. Rochester, New York, formerly of Prince George, British Columbia, Canada. 11 serves, 13. We she claim her as an American, but she really isn't. She's a Canadian. I actually don't. I do. Okay. Samantha winning her first ever Canadian National Singles Championship a month ago in Montreal, defeating Maria Dugas in the final. 12 serves, 13. Now scoring another point, 12 to 13. There's a beautiful inside out pass there from Ashling. Very difficult, Dave, to take that ball coming across your body with your shoulders facing the front 12. wall and hit it straight down the right wall, but Ashling did it. She put the right spin on that ball. Fourteen serves twelve. Love this camera angle here, Dave. Really feel like you get to know the players. You know, I know you know, Dave, but one of the reasons the NBA is so popular is because you really feel like you have a relationship with the players. They don't have hats on or helmets or really get to feel what they're feeling. I feel that way right now, Dave, watching these amazing women athletes. Well, that's a great camera angle right there as Samantha England dives in. I'd like to see a replay. If we could, if we, as we watch this first game of the women's semifinals, upper bracket. 15 serves 12. 15 to 12 is the score.
And that's a beautiful ceiling shot there from Ashley. And you know, Dave, out, 16, I don't think you've ever been in this court in a tournament match, but you might have gone in there to clean the glass. But when that ball goes into that back left corner, very difficult to bring it back out. There's just that little bit of a dark spot, sort of a strange bounce. It's not a bad bounce, but it doesn't come out exactly yeah. as you'd expect. And that's what happened here. Let's watch this replay. Ashlyn goes to the roof here. This is where Samantha dives in and just doesn't catch that ball. Kind of a squirrely shot there. Ashley not really going for that. There's Ashley Kill Riley there. sitting courtside here as she prepares for the second half of this first game. You're watching the 62nd United States Handball Association's Four Wall National Handball Championships and the continued coverage from the World Players of Handball streamed live at race48.com. My name is Dave Vincent alongside David Fink. Samantha England and Ashley Riley. Samantha is the four seed. Ashley is the number one seed, former national champion. She's won the senior championship in the Irish Nationals. 16. She played well in the World Championships in 2009. 16, but did not make the finals that year. Excuse I believe me, did, she did make the finals, but lost to Fiona Shannon. She played well in that tournament. Well, she actually put Anna Angle in retirement in that 12. tournament, beat her in the semifinals so badly. And, you know, Anna, being the competitor that she is, I think felt like, you know, I just can't compete with these young girls anymore. And that was her last event. Ashling digs that one out. I know, Dave, you're the type of player that wouldn't enter a tournament unless you thought you could win. That's why you're playing in, what is it, like the 37 to 38-year-old round robin doubles in 12, this event? 12, 17. I, I just. Well, some people have troubles losing. Okay. So I only enter if I feel like I can win, and if I lose, I don't get mad because I had the best chance. And that's unavoidable. And it's being called it's against Ashley again. We saw one yesterday. Ashley does not agree with these avoidable calls. But I think Dave, serves, when she goes back and studies the tapes, which she does sure with ball. the mute button on, she will see that those are avoidable Second hinders. Serve. I like that second serve right there. Yeah, right, that's right. What I've noticed, Dave, in the new age Side of out. handball, the new generation, particularly the top players today, is on that second 13. serve, they're just going for aces. In the old days, Dave, the second serve, you might hit a Z serve, something that's safe. But these players are so good now, Dave, that you can't afford to just throw the ball back into play. The second serve has to be almost like a first serve where you're going for it. And I know, Dave, you've played that way for a long time, but. The old school was the second serve is you have to make sure you get it in, try and put it back 13. to their offhand. But you Short see ball. players now, Dave, like Ashling or Paul Brady, Sean Lenning, they're going for cracks. They're going for aces on that second well, serve. Well, I logged one of my matches one time and noticed that I would serve 19 balls before serving one short second serve, third. and that was about the average. So I decided that if it takes 19 times to get a short, then the odds of me getting two shorts in a row would be almost impossible since the average time span between shorts is 19 serves. Sometimes it might, might be five, but the next one might be yeah, 28 or before. Basically what you're saying is you have a 95% chance of serving the ball over the line. Yeah, and if it's a good serve, I just stick with it. Now you see Sean Lenny and Luis Moreno kind of living by that creed and also Nadia Alvarado who doesn't go for the crack, but he has a great second serve and so does Paul 20. Brady. Those top elite players are increasing their odds of getting points by sticking with what brought them there. Well, you know, Dave, as a returner, you get that great feeling of comfort when someone's got a great first serve, they hit a short, and you feel like, okay, now I've got a, a, an easier serve coming. When you know you've got a serve just as tough coming on that second serve, very disconcerting. Sean Lenny specifically says he goes for a crack. He goes for a ball that could be a short. And you know, you see that, Dave, from all the great tennis players, Pete Sampras, was the best of all time because he's got the best second serve of all time. Just went for his aces on second serves. And you're seeing the handball players doing the same. Ashling trying to close this game out. Too many hand errors from Samantha England. And Ashley Riley now serving to take them the first game. Game point serves 14. If she looks tall on film, you should stand next to her. Because Ashley is a beast. She has very soft hands. She takes that first game 21 to 14, but she's tall. And she just wins the first one as she's trying to make her way to the 
national finals one more time here with the United States Handball Association. We're going to take a quick break, Dave. We'll be back in about four minutes. Stick around for more action here at RaceForEight.com.
And we are back live here as Ashley Riley goes into that second game, immediately pouncing on Samantha England after taking the first one. Well, Ashley showing some variety there, Dave, taking some pace off of that Samantha England return to serve drive and paddling it back down the right wall for the first point of the second game. First game, Dave had some strange shifts of momentum. It was Ashley starting fast, taking a 6-0 lead. Samantha tying the score at 10, and from there, Samantha not quite consistent enough to stay with Ashling and losing that first game 21-14. But if not for that 6-0 lead, the score would have been something like 15-14 and we would still be playing that first game. That tells you how close Samantha played Ashling for the three quarters of that last part of the first game. Well, it's there's another one of those balls that just dies in that back left corner. Very smart ceiling shot from Ashling. But that's why, Dave, you can't spot these great players a six-point lead to start off a match because that means you have to outplay them 21 to 14 to come back and win the game. I mean, do you want to spot Tiger Woods three strokes on the first hole? Maybe at a U.S. Open. I don't think at a regular tour. Two event, serve, zero. I believe, Dave, we see a lot of that mental Three, training zero. that Ashley goes through on a daily basis in Ireland at the Sport Institute coming into play here. She starts off games fast, then she kind of just coasts, and then she closes out games strong. And it's very difficult, Dave, even for the most highly conditioned athletes to just play it 100% throughout the entire game. There, there's always going to be those ebb and flows, so I think you'll see these great athletes start fast, coast, and then finish strong. See that a lot with uh, Paul Brady. And the similarities striking between the two, Ashling and Paul. Here's another big lead for Ashling Riley, looking for her second Five USHA zero. four wall women's pro title. We talked about Dave off the air between games. Just how fast these women's matches move along, Dave. There's no towel wiping, glove changes, timeouts, arguments. It's just all handball. The games are generally, Dave, between 20 and 25 minutes as opposed to men's games, which by the same score would be 50 to 55 minutes. So Zero the matches five. tend to be about half as long, which I, I enjoy, Dave. There's a great flow to the women's game. They did have... One serves five. They did have, Dave, about nine minutes between the first and second game. Not sure what that delay was. Neither, neither of these ladies, Dave, went to the locker room to change their shirt or change their glove, but yet they were just sort of standing around the court for an extra four minutes. Five serves one. Don't know what that delay was. Of course, we have our sideline reporter, Ashley Moeller, giving us one. intel. Hopefully we'll 
Short. Get some information from her. She must be getting that intel telepathically, Dave, because she's not wearing her headset or microphone. So I guess what you're saying is she's just so in tune with what we're thinking as she's still sleeping. That ball hurt off the back wall, off Samantha's left hand, right into the back side of Ashley Riley. The women, Dave, are playing with the red 21 ball. This is the first time the women have not played with the white ace or the white label ball in tournament competition. And I'll tell you, Dave, playing with this ball, and I know you've played with it, it's just so much softer than the, the ball that we're used to using for Seven, so many sir, years. One. And Dave, even being hit sir, with this ball by the hardest hitters just doesn't hurt at all. It, it's a strange thing. Second serve. We've all been, Dave, drilled in the back or drilled in the leg with some of the hardest hitters, and it stings. But for some reason, Dave, this ball is just a little bit lighter and softer, and it really doesn't even feel like anything when it hits your back or leg. What's interesting about the ball is that it's almost the same exact weight as the hard ball. Mm. We call it a hard ball, but yet it's it feels softer, more soft. How do you explain that, Dave? I know that you have an explanation for everything. Seven, seven, well, I believe it's the rubber. Mm. I believe it's a, a different rubber, and it's also, you know, if you bake a cake at your mom's house in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the winter, and then you bake one at my house, in Tucson, Arizona, the humidity is different in both places, the weather is different, and you just get a different result, even though the ingredients may be the same. Mm, interesting. And it's being baked in Ireland, this ball, as opposed to the hot summer in Taiwan where the ball was baked previously mm. at different humidity levels and elevations. My mom used to say, don't slam the door when she was baking a cake. And no, that had nothing to do with the conversation, but no, it, it actually did. It was a, a tremendous analogy, which really broke it down for me. I know for our listeners as well, the viewers. I love making food references to pretty much everything in life, as apparent by my size, 800 pounds and growing. Well, Leonard Garner said you were only 350 on the air yesterday, so now you can go crawl into your bed. No, no, I feel good about that. It's okay. closer to 800. I used to be, I used to worry about the weight. Mm -hmm. But then I won the Australian National Handball Championships. I figure a, if I could do it at this way. size, you know, if you could do it at this size, you can pretty much do anything you want. Was that also a big ball division in that event? I didn't play it, but there oh, was. Okay. I wanted to. Four, sir, seven. Was that a two event maximum? Three. Sir, ball. I played two events this year. I played three last. Okay. But after Ashley, Ashley Moeller actually beat me in a game of big ball four wall, I decided never to play again. I believe, Dave, our sideline reporter, Ashley Moeller, is now playing off for fifth place. So we may not have her available for the next 20 minutes or so. We'll certainly get you updates on those playoff matches in the women's draw. It's Bailey Chandler taking on Mariana Rush, Ashley Moeller taking on Ashley Prendeville, I believe. So That's something. right. Uh, actually, so Ashley is action. playing Tracy Davis. Seven, okay. seven, four. To Tucson women. Ashley now lives here in Southern California, but that was one of her sparring partners. And there's Ashley Riley taking one from Samantha England, and I know those hurt. Tracy Davis will be seven, returning seven, to the One Wall Nationals for the first time in three years. She's won that event seven times in the singles. Should be very interesting. We're not sure if we'll have a WPH present presence at that event, Dave. That certainly is one of the most fun events that I've I've heard in the world. Haven't had the opportunity to go. I know Dave, you and I had the opportunity to go to the Mayor's Cup a few years ago, which is one of the premier small ball one wall events in the in the country. Great atmosphere out there. Great competition. Ashley Riley with a tremendous back wall kill there with her right hand. Makes it look so easy. Ashley Dave really with the complete game. You'll notice, Dave, that when the players run into the back wall, that door pops open because the lock on the door is broken. In previous years, Dave, that door was locked as the players went in after a timeout. The lock, though, 
has been removed, and when there's any contact with the back wall, fading back into it to hit a shot or recovering into it, the door will pop open. The referee's saying, you know, if you're up in the front court and the door's open, I'm gonna let the play continue as long as it's not dangerous. Other times, like we just saw in that ninth point for Ashland, the door pops open and somebody in the in the stands will jump in there and close it real quickly. Yeah, it's kind of a iffy situation because the players that are playing know that the door open and it's in the back of your mind that it's open and, and not worried about the ball being hit, but just worried about taking one in the back. Now you specifically have an issue with that. You went back for a ball, you stuck your hand in a crack of a door, pulled your finger out and severed your finger, which uh, that's really the reason why you left pro handball for about nine years because you cut the tip of your finger off with one of those back doors that did not close properly. So I saw yesterday when the door opened between you and Paul Brady, you would look at the ref and the ref would say, I'm not going to call it unless it's dangerous. And you're like, hey, I lived nine years out of this sport because someone told me it wasn't dangerous. It ended up being dangerous. I'm sure that's uh, something that was in the back of your head. And, and I know it would be if I were in the court playing. I know I'd still be losing versus Ashley Riley right now, but if I were in the court losing to her, I would still be worried about that door opening up. The door can certainly be a dangerous situation. I don't think that your fingers can get through that door with gloves on. My finger went through because I didn't have gloves on at the time, and it, with the sweat on my pinky, it slid right through and severed it. So if you're at home, you might want to you know, not envision that. Or turn the volume down because we will. It's too late, though. We will do a little overkill on this okay. severed pinky because that's how we do it. Mm. Ashley won the first one, 21 to 14. Here's game number two now. First quarter is over, heading into the first half of this first game. Ashley with 11 and Samantha England with four. This is very similar, Dave, to what we saw in the U.S. Open final with Ashley taking on Megan Mahilos. Ashley won the first game pretty comfortably, led comfortably in the second game, and then all of a sudden just completely unraveled. Samantha needs to kind of draw on that. Megan is one of her idols. And that's why, Dave, studying the tapes and watching these matches is so important because you can draw strength from that. You say, well, you know, Megan did it. I'm in a similar situation. I can do the same thing. And that's an amazing shot from Ashley. And that's a very difficult shot. As that ball slid down the side wall, Ashley making the adjustment. 14, sir, four. And pulling it in the right corner. And right now, Dave, Samantha England will need to do something drastic to get herself back into this game. She'll need a couple of good breaks like that, and she's going to need a lot of great shot four, making. Sir, 14. Coming up next will be Jennifer Schmidt versus Mariana Rush. Jenny Schmidt, a just unbelievable, amazing competitor. She's in her 40s, still a regular in the national semifinals and finals. 14 serves four. We're seeing that in a lot of sports nowadays. Athletes keep themselves in great condition much longer than they used to, and we're seeing these top athletes playing into their 30s and 40s still dominating. Whereas before, Dave, we'd always say that these sports were a young Four person's game. You're seeing now David Hanball, it's Paul Brady into his 30s now, still the most dominant player in the sport. Four stars, 14. Charlie Shanks coming into his prime now, Dave, at about 29. He's been around for a long time and now playing his best handball. Samantha England trying to make this a match here. Second serve. Second serve, four to 14. The next one is in 30 minutes from right now. Jennifer Schmidt trying to win a national championship. She was in the finals in 2010 in Austin, Texas. Now, Dave, I know that you're off to play in your first round in about 30 minutes. We're gonna see if we can get Samantha England into the booth to announce that next women's match. A lot of times in handball, Dave, it's loser referees, but maybe it's loser announces. That's the real punishment. Well, I know this loser has been announcing <laughs> for quite some time, and I can prove it. Well, it's funny you say that, because I can't remember the last time you lost a tournament match. You went to Australia and slammed. I won the, the USHA Hall of Fame tournament there. 
That's true. Right before that. And I believe the last time you played before that was Australia, where you slammed three four, events. Four, so it's a it's a pretty long winning streak here. I only enter one or two tournaments a year, and like you said earlier, it's only if I know I'm going to win. I only enter tournaments that I know I can't win. That's the difference between you and I. I could play in local tournaments within three or four hours of myself. And no, I'd never lose, but I only want to enter the ones I know I will lose. Okay. That's just how I am. It's called masochism. <laughs> really a great week here, Dave, at Los Caballeros at the 62nd. That's a terrible shot from Samantha. One of the worst in the tournament. But just so much positivity here, Dave. You almost feel like you're at a self-esteem retreat. Everywhere you walk around, people are telling you, great playing, great match, love watching you play. And it's, it's not just that way with the pro players, win or lose. Everyone is just so positive, so happy to be a part of this fraternity. And the only negative happens right here in the broadcast booth. Here's a replay. Samantha England could have done a number of things here, Dave. Tell me what you think that you would have done knowing that this ball was going up and then basically Ashley standing up close. Would you have jammed that ball a little harder? Well, you know, watching the replay, I didn't realize how close she was to the front wall. She really didn't have a follow through there. She was so close that she had to stop her follow through at the point of contact, which really limited her swing there. Some players, they would actually let that hit the front wall again and paddle, re-kill it. Samantha, I don't think, realized how close she was to the front wall. She was looking to hit a spike either straight down the right wall or a spike V to the right. What would you have done in that situation? Though? I would have let that ball come off the front wall and hit it right into the ground, which I've done every time <laughs> I've tried it. And it's amazing when you do hit that shot in the ground because you're literally eight inches from the front wall, yet you hit the ball on the floor. Well, the reason why is that the ball has the, the wrong spin when it hits the front wall after it goes front wall, back wall, front wall again. It actually dives when it hits the front wall. A lot of players don't realize it's going to do that because, first of all, you only see one or two in your whole life, and that uh, you just don't realize that the ball's going to hit the front wall and shoot straight down. Well, when you're playing that shot, you really have to smack the ball with an open hand. You can't keep a cupped hand because it hits that cupped hand. The ball literally goes straight down. It won't go forward one inch. It's frustrating, though, when that happens because they've hit a terrible shot, and yet you're in a position where you can't really even swing. Nice serve there from Samantha. And Samantha, unlike most players, Dave, takes that with her left hand from the right side of the court and rolls it out. Five serves, 16. And now Samantha, Dave, playing more just for respectability. You know, Dave, having played in some matches before your proclamation only entered tournaments you could win. When you're down 16 to 5, you're just kind of thinking, well, I want to at least make this respectable serves, on the scorecard. You can at least go home holding your head high if you get... 10 or 11, you don't want to go out in a national semifinal in single digits. And now it's Samantha with a nice run here, Dave. Four and I believe that you probably, points. you know, felt that a little bit yesterday with Paul Brady in that second game where you said, you know, I, I have a feeling I'm going to lose here, but I better get into double digits. It's true. I mean, you can't, you can't deny it. Everyone has pride. You know, you don't want to get a six put on you in a national semifinal. Well, I've actually baked players to allow me to score some points. I've even thrown out sand. Tony Healy is a great example. 2006 Ulster Open. I was just getting annihilated from Tony. And I said, I've got people here watching. You can't do this to me. And he just let up just a little bit to allow me to get in the server's box so I can get some points. And, you know, I'll always thank him for that. And that's why he's at my table hmm. when I have my final meal. <laughs> I also begged Danny Bell and Sean Linney at past tournaments. I have a full list. If you have to beg a player, they're sitting at your table. That's how it works. And Samantha with a great run there, Dave. Five consecutive points in that inning. And she really looked good there. 16 serves nine. Playing her best handball during that five-point stretch. And sometimes, Dave, that's unfortunately what you need against a great player. You get so far down, the pressure's off. And you just stay, you know, you just start swinging freely. And, you know, a great player like Ashing maybe loses their concentration just a little bit 17, with that 16 to 4 lead. And you put together a, a nice run. And Samantha anticipated that right corner kill. She moved into the perfect position and then just unable to 
make that retrieve with their left hand. A hand error. Samantha Dave still in the doubles. Looks like she'll be eliminated from the singles here. Don't ask me who she's playing with. I've screwed it up so many times that I'm not even going to attempt it. I believe she's playing with Jenny Schmidt, but I've been wrong so many times. Well, that's why you need to memorize the bracket. I've tried. It's just... There's only eight teams. It's pretty easy to do. The only team I know is who I have in my death pool so jubilee, high. Tracy Davis and Bailey Chandler. I got them at five and a half to one. I took them in my suicide pool. Okay, well, they're going to go up against Samantha England and Jennifer Schmidt at okay. 4.15 this afternoon. And that match will be webcasted. Right, so will the potentially. Ashley and Riley trying to fill match up against Mariana Rush. Well, we, we actually rush. We have the the men's double semifinals at the same time, so I'm not sure which 19, sir, will be webcast. Ladies come first. Well, if I had my vote, it would be the ladies, but I've never been asked for my opinion on anything. There's another air in that back left corner. Ashley. Playing the ceiling so well, Dave, with the right hand, she really understands the geometry of the court. She aims halfway between where she's standing and the left side wall when she hits the ceiling, knowing that that's gonna bring the ball right into that back left corner. And Samantha, even though she's got a strong left and a strong overhand left, really nothing she can do with that shot. It looks like Samantha's a little bit winded here. She takes a timeout at 20 to nine. I know, Dave, that at 29, I'm usually just looking to get to the locker room. You know, Samantha may be extending her stay on the webcast booth, maybe just enjoying the opportunity to be on the court with such a great player and, you know, saying, hey, I want to make this last as long as I possibly can. It's like somebody going out and playing Augusta National. I mean, you don't walk off the course on the 14th hole because you just made a couple double bogeys. Good replay right there of that shot that Ashley Riley hit. Still a very good event for Samantha. Great win yesterday. Put her into the semifinals for the second consecutive year. And that's a big feather in the cap of any pro player, Dave, to make the semifinals of the Nationals. We apologize. That was really loud right next to our court mic as Samantha is cleaning off her Shoes, I agree with you about taking that extra little time out. Just to kind of soak this moment up. This might be the last time you get in a position like this where you're on a live web broadcast or, you know, a, a, a major tournament like this. Making the semifinals, as you know, Dave, that has to be a career achievement for you. You made the semis of the national championship. It feels actually really, really good. And there it is. There's that Samantha last point. Samantha will feel the same way. She should be very proud of her performance in this event and also how she played today. We are going to say goodbye for about 20 minutes, be back for that second women's semifinal match right around the corner for Dave Fink as well as Linda Manning and Jeff Kastner. I'm Dave Vincent. It's continued coverage from the World Players of Handball for the United States Handball Association's 62nd Four Wall National Handball Championships. We'll be back in just a bit at racebreak.com. Stick with us. I think we're really on our game. Like, I feel like we're really, like, I'm really, I really came to play today. My name is Bruce Fabrizio. In 1975, I invented Simple Green based on three principles. It had to be safer to use, it had to work, and it had to be completely made in America. From generation to generation, Simple Green has been cleaning everything from car engines and tools to kitchen counters and floors. No matter what you clean, indoors or outdoors, clean it with non-toxic, biodegradable Simple Green. For 20 years, the Inner City Handball Association has educated, mentored, and served young people through handball. 
Young people that participate in the Inner City Handball Association programs have a high graduation rate from high school and continue on to college. Inner City Handball teams are good athletes, good students, and good ambassadors for the sport of handball. We need your help to continue our work. Inner City Handball Association is a registered 501c3 tax-exempt charity. Please donate today. Thank you. Thank you.